What's your take on this new bill? Because when I look at it, it looks a lot like a, a climate change bill with some social programs as a kicker. Yeah, I mean, number one, uh, the biggest anchor or the biggest engine of this bill at this point is the climate stuff. It's about $555 billion of that $1.75 trillion. There are huge uh, investments in social programs, uh, an expansion of the uh, earned income tax credit and child tax credit. Uh, you're going to see uh, universal care for children um, and, uh, and pre-K. Um, you know, that's also a huge piece of this. But really, climate is the biggest engine of this bill. And, of course, uh, what is going on this morning is an attempt by Democratic leaders to sell progressives on the idea that there is a deal on this reconciliation bill uh, with the senators so that they can free up that infrastructure bill that they're trying to get done uh, before Terry McAuliffe uh, is up on the ballot in Virginia uh, on Tuesday and before President Biden leaves for Europe. Uh, none of these players have actually signed off on it publicly. And I talked to a Democratic member of Congress, Ro Khanna, one of the progressives this morning, said, you know, where does this stand? And he said, has Bernie signed off on it? Do, do they have senators on board, Leanne? Where is Bernie Sanders on this? Well, that is the question we're hearing from our sources, Stephanie, that Bernie Sanders backs the position of the progressives, and that is that until there is legislative text, then there, they will not give their vote for the bipartisan infrastructure bill that Speaker Pelosi wants to vote on today. Let me just see who's walking behind me. Congresswoman, can you stop for the cameras? Sorry, I was going to try to get uh, Representative Custer, who was in that meeting with President Biden just now, to see what was being said. We did hear moments ago from another member, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, that they are going through the bill section by section in that room behind me. President Biden has been in there for 35 minutes, so he is also educating the caucus on what is in this bill. And that is, you know... In the, in the steps of how this is supposed to go, educating and convincing and persuading people to get on board, that is a huge task to do in an hour meeting uh, this morning. He's going to address the nation in just a little bit. And again, it's these progressives. Uh, they have already conceded a lot in this legislation. There is no paid family leave. There is no free community college. Their pro social programs have been reduced dramatically as far as numbers are concerned. And so now he has to get them them on board to vote for this bipartisan bill while also simultaneously convincing them that Senators Manchin and Cinema are on board. We haven't heard yet from Senators Cinema and Manchin yet this morning. We are staked outside their office. We're also not getting a lot of details of what's happening inside that meeting behind me, Steph, because they had to drop their cell phones. And so the leakers were unable. So it's a black hole in there right now. So we're waiting for people to leave. But there's all these outstanding questions. And one thing that I do want to note, looking through the details of this legislation, for example, this home elderly and disabled care, the original proposal was $400 billion. What they have in this proposal now is just $150 billion. The biggest proponents of this, like Senator Bob Casey of Pennsylvania, he told me multiple times that $250 billion is really what's necessary for this program to even work and be effective. But here, they just funded it at $150 billion. So there's going to be a lot of questions, not just on where Senator Cinema and Manchin stand, but also if they can get the rest of the caucus on board. Stephanie? Uh, I want to point out just about five minutes ago, Congresswoman Jayapal tweeting, we will deliver both the infrastructure package and the Build Back Better Act to people across America, but we cannot do that if we don't even have a bill. Underscoring this idea that kind of it doesn't really matter what Joe Manchin says about what's in it. They want to see the details. Um, thus far, John, does it look like funding the IRS is the most significant pay for in it? Uh, it does, Stephanie. That's the uh, out of the one point nine trillion dollars or so they say they can get out of revenues. Uh, IRS enforcement beefing up the IRS is uh, is absolutely the number one. Uh, just look at my notes here. It's at four hundred billion dollars. They say that would produce over 10 years. And of course, the other big ones are a global minimum tax at 15 percent, which would be three hundred fifty billion over 10 years. Of course, we haven't seen Congress give uh, money scores on this yet. And there is no text yet. This is what the White House mm -hmm. estimate is. And then uh, an alternative minimum tax for large corporations in the United States of 15 percent that would bring in about three hundred twenty five billion over 10 years. Combine those things. I'm just doing a little back of the envelope math here. Uh, about 1.1, 1.2 trillion of that total 1.9 trillion in, in revenue raisers.
John, let's stay on that. How significant is this, this corporate minimum tax, right? There's all this debate over, should, uh, the, the, should corporates pay 21%, 25%, when we know there are over 50 major corporations that last year paid zero. I'm sure the three of us, none of us paid zero last year, but Nike, Salesforce, FedEx, they paid zero. With this change, everyone, no matter what, will have to pay a base of 15%. Since Janet Yellen just worked to get over 130 countries, including China and Ireland, to agree to a global minimum tax, how essential is this for the United States to do the same? Because if we don't, we're walking the walk. And we are, excuse me, we're talking the talk, but we are not walking the walk. Sort of what we've been doing on climate change for the last several years, right? The United States wanted uh, everybody to participate in uh, combating climate change and was not necessarily willing to uh, put up its own numbers um, where it should. There are really two sort of pieces to this um, this tax regime, and they're they're kind of aimed at the same thing, which is this uh, idea of a 15 percent minimum tax. The one is on the global level, so uh, basically you're taxing uh, the foreign earnings of U.S. companies at a uh, an even 15 percent rate, which is uh, which makes it more difficult for companies to try to uh, locate their sales and their businesses in other countries to take advantage of. Um, better rates there. Uh, and then the other piece, of course, is the 15 percent minimum tax uh, for domestic companies uh, that have more than a billion dollars in profits. And that's something that uh, Senator Sinema was uh, negotiating with Senator Warren the other day. Obviously, with it in here, it appears like that's something that Sinema will go for. Um, and uh, it's something that's going to hit, uh, uh, you know, a bunch of companies in New York and, and in California and San Francisco and in Washington state. So that's uh, Pelosi, Schumer and Jayapal now. Um, you know, having to either go for that or, um, or or sink it because they're constituents. Leanne, quickly, before we go crazy thought, we keep talking about what Democrats are on board. We need to remind our audience, any Republicans, are there any Republicans supporting this? And if not, are they prepared to go home and tell all their constituents, nope, they don't care about elder care, they don't care about Medicare, they don't care about the child tax credit or free pre-K? There are zero Republicans who are even zero. considering supporting this, Stephanie. They call it the zero. They call it the crazy tax and spending bill. And in the bipartisan infrastructure bill, there were 19 senators who supported it. In the House, we expect fewer than 10 once it finally comes up for a vote. So there is absolutely no Republicans who are even considering voting for this, uh, this President Biden's agenda, Stephanie.